Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all to my channel that is Best Notes Tutorials and uh, here we are starting with first day of next month. So let's begin with MCQs. But before that let me tell you, we are preparing for different examinations. Here you can find the details where you can contact us and uh, get information about different examinations and the courses related to those. So without wasting time, let's begin with our first day's question number one. Question number one. Which novel by Thomas Hardy has been called an anti bildux Roman? Bildux Roman means development. Okay, development of the protagonist. So which is anti development of the protagonist? Your options are option A, Tess of the D. Arbor Wheels, option B, Jude and Obscure, option C, Far from the Madling Crowd, option D, The Return of the Native. So here it is about Jude the Obscure. Jude was the protagonist here and throughout the novel there is no development of the protagonist. Let's see the highlighters, friends. Jude and Obscure is a novel by Thomas Hardy which began as a magazine series serial in December 1894 and was first published in book form in 1895. It is Hardy's last novel. Its protagonist, Jude Foley, is a working class young man, a stone mason who dreams of becoming a scholar. Here in the novel we see Jude who is the protagonist aspires to become a scholar but he fails to do that. Therefore it is anti bildux Roman novel. Question number two. Match the books with the authors. Here, here you will find the name of the books and here name of the authors so you have to match these two now please try on your own before I show you the answers Cranford is the name of the book Villet is another book's name a Sicilian romance then Agnes Grey then Valperga the author's name are Annie Bronte Mary Shelley Anne Radcliffe Elizabethan Gaskell and Charlotte Bronte. So let me show you the answer. Here, the work Cranfort is written by Elizabeth Gaskell. Willet is written by Charlotte Bronte. A Sicilian Romance is written by Anne Radcliffe. Agnes Grey is written by Anne Bronte. Option, sorry, number E. Valperga is written by Mary Shelley. So you can take the screenshot if you want to keep it or you can write in your diary as well. Cranford is one of the better known novels of the 19th century. English writer by English writer Elizabeth Gaskill. It was first published irregularly in eight installments between December 1851 and May 1853 in the magazine Household Words, which was edited by Charles Dickens. Villette is another work. It is another novel by Charlotte Bronte and it was published in 1853. Originally published in 1853, January was the month. After an unspecified family disaster, the protagonist Lucy Snowy travels from her native England to the fictional French-speaking city of Villette to teach at a girls' school where is drawn into adventure and romance. So here in the question you might be asked who is the protagonist in the novel 
and why does she travel okay and what is the title you have to write it is the name of the place which is imaginary okay it is fictional fictional means imaginary Willett was Charlotte Bronte's third and last novel published in writing by the professor her posthumously published first novel posthumously means after the death of the author okay published first no after her death published first novel of which Willett is a reworking Jane Eyre and Shirley is the protagonist here next work is a sicilian romance a sicilian romance is a gothic novel by ann radcliffe gothic means related to ghost and supernatural elements okay it was her second published work and was first published anonymously in 1790 anonymously means without the name of the author Next work is Agnes Grey. Agnes Grey is a novel. It's a novel, a novel which is debut of Annie Bronte, first published in December eighteen forty seven and republished in a second edition in eighteen fifty. The novel follows Agnes Grey, a governess, as she works within families of the English gentry. So here, Agnes Grey is the name of this servant, name of the governess, and uh, this is the question which has appeared in past examinations as well. So please keep in mind. Next work is Valperga, Valperga, or the life and adventures of Castruccio, Prince of Lucca, is an eighteen twenty three historical novel by. The romantic novelist Mary Shelley, set amongst the wars of the Gloves and Ghibellines. Okay. Question number three: Of kings, treasuries, and of queens, of queen's gardens are the two parts of a famous books by option A. Carlyle, option B. Macaulay. Option C, Ruskin, and option D, Hazlitt. So here it is John Ruskin, who is the writer of these books. John Ruskin was the leading English art critic of Victorian era, as well as an art patron, draughtsman, watercolorist, philosopher, prominent social thinker, and philanthropist. He wrote. On subjects as varied as geology, architecture, myth, or mythology, literature, education, botany, and political economy. Or mythology means study of birds. Okay, of kings' treasuries and of queens' gardens are the two parts of John Ruskin, Sisem, John Ruskin, Sisem, and Lilies. The book was first published in eighteen sixty-five. John Ruskin's *Sisem and Lilies* consists of two lectures of King Treasures and of Queen's Gardens, delivered in December eighteen sixty-four at the two halls at Ruslom and Manchester. The first half of the original work of King's Treasures, Treasury, sorry. Is a critic of Victorian manhood. The second half of Queen's Gardens counsels women to be moral guides and urges parents to educate them as such. Let's move to question number four. In which novel does Thomas Hardy present the Melstock Coir? Your options are option A, Far from the Madding Crowd, option B, The Wood. Landers, option C, desperate remedies, and option D, under the greenwood trees. So here, option D is correct. That is under the greenwood trees. Let's see the highlighters, friends. 
Under the Greenwood Tree, a rural painting of the Dutch school is a novel by the English writer Thomas Hardy, published anonymously in 1872. It was Hardy's second published novel and the first of what was to become his series of vexes novels. The novel follows the activities of a group of West Gallery musicians, the Melstock Paris Coir, one of whom, Dick Dewey, becomes romantically entangled with a comely new village schoolmistress. Her name was Fancy D. The novel opens with the fiddlers and singers of the choir, including Dick, his father, Reuben Dewey and grandfather William Dewey, making the rounds in Melstock village on Christmas Eve. Question number five. Bob Cratchit, a kind man with a large family, is a character in Option A, The Old Curiosity Shop, Option B, A Christmas Carol, Option D, Hard Times and Option sorry. Option C, Hard Times, and Option D, Nicholas Nickelby. Here it is Option B, A Christmas Carol. Bob Cratchit is a fictional character in Charles Dickens' 1843 novella, A Christmas Carol. A Christmas Carol in his prose, being host story of Christmas, commonly known as A Christmas Carol, is a novella by Charles Dickens, first published in London by Chapman and Hall in 1843 and illustrated by John Leach. A Christmas Carol recounts the history of Ebenezer Scrooge, an elderly mister who is visited by the ghost of his former business partner, Jacob Marley, and the spirit of Christmas past, present, and yet to come. After their visits, Scrooge is transformed into a kinder, gentler man. Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol during a period when the British were exploring and re-evaluating past Christmas tradition, traditions, including carols and the newer customs such as Christmas trees. He was influenced by the experience of his own youth and by the Christmas stories of other authors including Washington Irving and Douglas Gerald. Next question number six. Who is Littimer in David Copperfield? Option A. Miss Betsy's husband. Option B. Agnes' uncle. Option C. James Steer fourth's servant and option d mr spenlow assistant so here option c is correct that is james steerforth's servant here littimer is james steerforth's servant let's see the highlighters littimer is james steerforth's servant littimer is extremely discreet and formal servant his presence always makes David feel terribly young because Littimer is so precise and exact about all of his duties. Question number seven. Josiah Bonder by is a character in option A, Hard Times, option B, David Copperfield, option C, Bleak House and option D, Dombey and Son. So here, it is a character from Hard Times. Let's see the highlighters. Josiah Boulder by the wealthy middle-aged factory owner of Coketown is a self-made man. He is Mr. Grad Grind's best friend. Indeed, he is himself a fiction or a fraud. Question number 8. Which Robert Browning's poems is subtitled shortly after the revival of learning in Europe. Here, your options are the bishop orders his tomb, option B, the grammarian's funeral, option C, apt vogler 
or option D Rabi Ben Ejra. So here option B is correct that is the Grammarian's funeral. Highlighter says Robert Browning's A Grammarian's Funeral subtitled Shortly After the Revival of Learning in Europe is a funeral elegy in four stanzas. It is written in the first person plural suggesting either a group or a single person speaking for a group. A Grammarian's Funeral is a eulogy. Eulogy means a praise or tribute to someone who has just died. Robert Browning's A Grammarian's Funeral is a dramatic monologue set in shortly after the Renaissance in Europe. So friends, here are small details of each question. Please keep in mind, you will be asked question from anywhere from the text. Question number 9. Browning's Por Fyria's Browning's Profiria's lover is set in your options are a palace, option B a cottage, option C a boat and option D a field. So here the correct answer is option B that is a cottage. Let's see the highlighters. Porphyria's Lover is a poem by Robert Browning which was first published as Porphyria in the January 1836 issue of Monthly Repository. Browning later republished it in Dramatic Lyrics in the year 1842, paired with John's Agricola in Meditation under the title Madhouse Cells. The poem did not receive its definite definitive title until 1863. Porphyria's Lover is Browning's first ever short dramatic monologue and also the first of his poems to examine abnormal psychology. The last point says the entire poem takes place in a cottage by a lake on rainy and windy day, windy night. Question number 10. Browning's My Last Duchess is written in Option A, enjabbed blank verse. Option B, enjabbed rhyming couplet. Option C, end stopped rhyming couplets. And option D, end stopped blank verse. So here, correct answer is option C, that is end stopped rhyming couplets. My last Duchess structure is end stopped rhyming couplets. Let's go towards the highlighters now. My Last Duchess is a poem by Robert Browning, frequently anthologized as an example of the dramatic monologue. It is first appeared in 1842 in Browning's Dramatic Lyrics. The poem written in 28 rhyming couplets of iambic pentameter. There are one long stanza in the poem having 56 lines in it. The poem follows iambic pentameter. End is rhymed poem. The poem consists of 28 heroic couplets.